This is just one piece of a multi-part course on designing characters inside of Adobe Animate. Gain access to this full course plus exercise files and a discount by clicking the link in the description. The time has come to color in our character. And we'll start with the head and work our way down similar to how we did the line work. So first things first, I'm going to hide everything and lock everything. And I can do that again by clicking on those top icons on the timeline. Coming down here to the head, I'm just going to come in and unlock it as well as reveal it. So now we want to start selecting our colors and filling in. At this point, you could use your own discretion and use whichever colors you wish. However, since this is based on an existing design, I'm going to try to match the colors from the original design. And to do this, I'm just going to bring in a reference similar to the sketch. So let's create a new layer. I'll name this one color reference. So that way we know exactly what this is supposed to be. And I will also bring it all the way down to the bottom. So that way we can keep the help images or the guide images on the bottom just for some organization. And when it comes to the reference, you'll find inside your exercise files that we have something called originalreference.png. And this actually contains two different varying designs and color schemes for the character. And again, completely for your own reference, you don't have to reference these colors if you don't want to. But I'm just going to click and drag and bring this over to animate CC, just like that. And I was on the layer, the color reference layer, when I brought this in. So you can see it's currently on that layer. If it's not, and you want it on that layer, you can easily just use Control X or Command X to cut, and then Control Shift V or Command Shift V on the layer you want to paste it on that layer. So now we have that reference in place, and I'm just gonna move it up like so. That way I can reference it. And again, you can see here that there are two different variations of this. I actually did this one on the left in Moho, and the one on the right is from Procreate. And the one on the right is actually the original. And so I think I'm gonna reference those colors when doing this. So we can put him right about there. Next, let's come over here and you'll find the eyedropper tool or eye on the keyboard. If you have your toolbar like this, it's gonna be right under the ink bottle tool. So right there. And this allows us to select any color we see on the canvas. And that's why we have this little guy right here. So we want to locate a part of his face that doesn't have any shading or highlights. So if you come in here, you can see we have some highlights here and some shading here. We want to select basically right in the middle to get the color that we want. And if I bring back this toolbar just a little bit here, you can see that we did indeed reference that color. Now, I'm just gonna zoom out here and come over here to the head. And let's make sure now we click on the head so that we can edit that layer. And when we use the eyedropper and we select a color, it's going to automatically put us to the paint bucket tool so that we can easily fill in as quick as possible. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. When you're filling in, you do have some options on the bottom to be aware of. Gap size is the biggest one. When it comes to filling in objects, you always want your objects to be enclosed if possible. However, if there's a slight gap somewhere and you can't find it, you can use these options to help close the fill gap even if there's a little hole within your line work. But I'm gonna start with don't close gaps. And you can also choose to lock your fill, which basically allows you to lock gradients and that sort of thing. And it shouldn't really pertain to us right now. So now if I come over here and click within the head, I can fill. And you can see due to how everything's closed in, we have no issues filling in. And I can come over here and click on the ear as well to also fill that in. So let's focus on this ear for one moment. If we come over here to our reference, you'll notice that there's actually no line work separating the ear and the head. So we can come down here and mimic that now. We're just gonna come in here and click on that line and remove it, along with this one and that one. And then we have something that kind of looks like this now. 
might just come in here and reduce this one to two. So something like that. So it kind of looks like it comes over like so. And then we have this little piece right here, which isn't quite how I want it. So we're just going to remove the width profile from that. Let's reduce that to four. And in fact, I'm just going to double click on that whole thing and just reduce it to four. So that way the line works a little bit less thick compared to what we had it. So now if we zoom back out, we can see it looks like this. And it's a little bit similar to how we had it right there. So now let's focus on the hair, filling that in. We can reveal the hair just like that. We can also lock the head if we wish, so that way we don't accidentally alter it. Once again, we're just going to come in here, hit I on the keyboard, and then select the hair. And then using the paint bucket tool, making sure we are on the hair layer, we can fill in. Now, you can see I'm having issues filling in. And it probably has to do with the fact that there might be a gap somewhere. So the first time that happens, you might want to come in here and just look at that gap option we were talking about. So I'll start with closing small gaps. It doesn't seem to work. Come over here and let's go down to large gaps and see if that works. And that one actually does. So now if we zoom in, we might find there's a gap somewhere here. And there could be just depending on how the line works working. But I'm also going to click in that area and just fill that in. And I don't see any gaps, but it's possible they are there and we're just not seeing it. I am going to take the opportunity though to come in here and just do a little bit of cleanup with some of the lines. So maybe reduce this one, change the width profile and put it to four, just to kind of get a idea for this. And actually looking at that, maybe I'll try changing that width profile back again. Actually, that's not too bad now looking at that. So that's looking better than it was. And we might make some other modifications here. Once we get everything in, we can look at it in its entirety. But we have this filled in, so that should work for right now. So now let's fill in the other areas pertaining to the hair. I'll start with a large strand. I can bring that to visibility. I'm also going to lock the main hair so that way I don't accidentally alter it. Now, if we quickly just isolate the hair strand, and you can do so by holding in Alt and clicking on the visibility option. You can see I just isolate it really quick. You'll notice that we don't have a line going from here to here, and we're gonna need that in order to fill in. So, to make this work, we can come in here really quick and just grab the line tool, and making sure we're on the large strand layer. Just click and drag from point A to B, just like that, so that way we can close off that little shape and we can fill in. So now with that closed off, I can come in here with my paint bucket and just fill in like that. Once you've filled in, we can hit V and come back here and click on that line we just made and then hit delete because we actually don't want that separation. We just needed it to fill in. So now if we were to bring back the hair, you can see now it has this natural continuation effect where there's no line. Let's do the same for the small strand. Coming over here, we can unlock it and we can reveal it. We still have the main hair locked so that way we don't get interference with that. Let's just grab the line tool and once again using the magnetics so that way we can easily connect. We're just going to click and drag and go all the way up like that. Then we want to select the paint bucket tool, which is K on the keyboard. Using the same color, it should be saved. We can come in here and just fill that in. Hit V to bring back the selection tool, select this, and then hit delete. So now we have the hair starting to get filled in, and it's not looking too bad. There's one more piece of hair we need to focus on. Let's just reveal the ponytail and unlock it. Hit K to make sure we have that paint bucket, and then we can fill it in just like that. And there you are. You now have the head as well as your ponytail and your hair filled in. We'll pause here, and up next, keep filling in the character. To view the rest of this course and gain access to the source files, visit toonfiles.com. Use the link in the description to receive a discount.